so a connecting thought there may be, and this was a question I had written down also, you know, it's um, getting very popular to just eat white meat and, mm -hmm. and to, to you know, beef is bad and lamb is bad, right. it's, you know, it's harder to digest, all that stuff. To me, the herbivore is like the backbone of the farm, in my opinion, because of grass and, and um, it produces so much that even chicken can live off of and so on and, right. and you don't have to import the feed, you have it right there and so on. So what is your thought in response to that? Maybe you have some special insight there. Well, sure. Well, I mean, uh, I'm very clear that if you really want to eat, if you really want to eat uh, ecologically, you don't eat chicken, you eat grass-finished beef right. uh, or lamb. And you eat an herbivore. And that's why the herbivore and seafood were the backbone of ancient diets mm -hmm. all over the world is because seafood and the herbivore are the two nutrient-dense foods that can be eaten without tillage, without grain. Right. And, and so... It's the industrial agriculture yeah, that changed right. it. So, so, so what's, what's happened is that as we have gone to a, a completely anti-ecological, anti-nutritional approach to raising uh, herbivores and, and meat, we've started feeding them grains and things, uh, herbivores, What's happened is that the the quality of the meat has gone way down. It doesn't have the conjugated linoleic acid. Fourteen days of grain feeding shoves all the conjugated linoleic acid out of the body of a of a dairy animal or, or a beef animal. And um, you know, CLA is is an extremely important uh, uh, fatty acid. It's a, it's like the number one anti carcinogen. It keeps our um, the synapses of our nerve endings uh, pliable, so we can. You know, uh, work together, and um, and so so what happens is that lots of times a person um, comes off of toxic meat, goes to a vegetarian or a vegan diet, and feels great hmm. because so much meat has so much toxicity in it because mm -hmm. it's not it's it's raised in a factory, it's, it's breathing in fecal particulate, you know, all the time, and it's not raised well. And then after six, seven, eight months, what happens is it starts to it starts to go the other way, mm -hmm. and then they start having you know joint issues and, and uh, you know eyes get hollow and you start having colds and you have cravings you know you want to, you're, you're hungry all the time because you can't get satiated mm -hmm. because the vegetables don't satiate you and, and nuts and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's a you know there's a um, you know there, there's a progression here. And uh, goodness, I, I can tell you, I mean, we service thousands of customers, and I can't tell you how many hundreds we have who have gone down, you know, that road, yeah. that, that road mm -hmm. and they wake up one morning and they can't stand up. Mm -hmm. uh, they can't have ch kids. They're, you know, women quit uh, menstruating, or, you know, there are any number of, of things that occur. Um, you know, autoimmunity in kids. I mean, there's all sorts of things that happen and develop um, when you do that, you know, for an extended period of time. Um, now, for sure, some people have a, whatever, a microbiome, a blood type, a, you know, an affinity to be able to, to do it longer. And so this is not, you know, this is not cut and dried. But I'll tell you what, I've seen way too many people debilitated and then cure themselves. Um, I mean, one is uh, Jordan Peterson. I mean, if you ever see his uh, YouTube um, things, you know, he had a daughter that had uh, two knee replacements and a hip replacement by the time she was 16 with autoimmune rheumatoid arthritis issues. And she did a bunch of research and she finally quit eating anything but meat. She just quit eating anything but meat. That's all she ate. And within a year, she was vibrant, up and around, doing great. He was so amazed at what he saw in his daughter that he started eating nothing but meat. Yeah. And he said, now I feel great. That's crazy. So, that, yeah. that goes really against what so many people say and teach today and, and what's yeah. popular out there. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, people love fads. Mm -hmm. You know, they love fads. And and um, that, that's why I call I call this whole veganism thing an urban disease. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think part of it is that when the only association you have with an animal is your pet cat, dog, parakeet, gerbil, whatever, you, you, you cast upon all animals uh, petness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and petness then 
you know, gives you a, a jaundiced perspective of the animal-human relationship. Yeah, we have these folks standing around with signs, you know, with a dog and a, and a pig, and this is love, this you kill, you know, like, I, I think it's really right. a disconnection to, to the roots and, and how things are done, yeah. Sure. It's funny, on our, our channel, we have also a quite big following from all over the world, and um, you have people from not so much Western countries, they're like, why is this even an issue, you know? <laughs> so it's, sure, yeah. sure. Well, you know, the people that are against animals, uh, eating animals, generally have not gone and lived in a third world country. Yeah. One of the reasons why in many, um, uh, whatever, you know, native, uh, native cultures, why animals are, are considered um, money, Mm -hmm. How many how many cows do you have? Right. You know, how many, yeah. um, is be wealth a, a, a substance of wealth is because you know when you when you have when you uh, face the insecurity of place because you know uh, the rains could stop mm -hmm. or um, or or goodness uh, some some uh, rival tribe comes in and runs your tribe out, you know, for whatever, when there's insecurity, there's nothing as, as sustaining as an animal yeah. because it can go with you as you flee or move and provide sustenance without refrigeration, mm -hmm. without having to carry it. It's got legs it can move to, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're going to flee, you can only carry so many bags of grain, or so many cucumbers, or so many watermelons, you know, on your right. belt. Uh, if you've got a flea, you want the goats, the chickens, and the milk cow, and and they can kind of forage and pick and, and move along, and you know, and, and if you need to eat one, you eat one. Mm -hmm. uh, but but you you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you, you have you have a, a moving a moving pantry, mm -hmm. you know, that can go with you, and so. It, in some ways, the whole anti-livestock approach mm -hmm. is is in a very elitist, yeah. um, elitist, uncharitable view toward uh, toward people that aren't as secure as folks who get very normal rain and who have you know electricity mm -hmm. and stable civilizations and and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm.